So today I wanna to tell you about the scariest experience I ever had camping, the all night bear raid. So a bunch of years ago when my daughter was six years old, I wanted to take her out backpacking because she really loved the outdoors, she liked hiking, and of my two daughters, she was the one that was more into it. So I planned this kind of easy five day trip in Desolation Wilderness where we would only really walk a few miles a day and camp in different places or maybe stay overnight in the same place a couple nights. It was all super flexible and super easy so uh, we packed up everything and I pretty much carried most of everything so I had a really heavy pack and my daughter she had a pack too but she was carrying some lighter things like her sleeping bag and some socks and snacks and stuff like that and we set out from Meeks Bay uh, just entering the wilderness that way and we hiked up to this lake that I can't remember the name of it and uh, we slept there the first night I think it was maybe a four and a half mile hike in or something it was super easy we set up camp and we had a really nice first night out in the wilderness you know maybe saw a couple people but not that many and then the second night we actually um, we, were, we wanted to do a loop because I hate going out and back I really want to do a loop if I'm backpacking so that I can see all new scenery so uh, we picked a trail that wasn't actually very well maintained it was just sort of a well barely maintained if maybe not maintained trail it was on the map so it basically kind of went more directly up over the mountains uh, on to to meet up with the pacific crest trail and it took us a lot longer than we thought but it was only a few miles gosh i don't know i just want to say maybe it was three miles or something like that but it felt a little bushwhacky there was a lot of grass there was a lot of finding of the trail but it was all okay and uh, we made it to the pct and kind of at the junction or near the junction we just kind of went back in the woods a little bit and found a campground that was really nice and so we set up there now the problem with this trip is that I was carrying everything for two people and so I had brought too much food which if you know watching my other videos that's a theme with me so I had a bear can and that bear can was stuffed with food and then I had another little extra bag of food that I figured I would just you know double hang from a tree to keep it out of the reach of the bears so we camped there we set up we had dinner I stuffed everything I could into the bear can I took it down the hill put it in a safe place really far away from us but in a nook where the bear couldn't like you know kick it down the hill or whatever because you got to be careful you don't put your bear can someplace where the bear can like actually like throw it down a canyon or whatever trying to get into the food and then the extra the extra bag that I was gonna double hang, there wasn't really a good tree anywhere. Like I looked all over the place, but I did find a tree that I could sort of hang it on and you know, it wasn't really that high. I mean, I wanna say it was like maybe, I don't know, uh, eight, eight feet off the ground, maybe if that, and it wasn't double hung because I couldn't find a branch big enough. So I had to just kind of hang it from the tree. We go to bed, I don't know, maybe it was an hour or two into the night. We started hearing all these noises, this scratching noise, scratch, 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 scratch noise. And then, you know, I heard this animal, big animal walking around. I would hear it scratching and then I would hear it go down the hill. And it was like, you could hear it scratching on the bear pan, you know, and then it would like calm and it would like circle the tent and so then I was like holy crap there's a big bear out there because I could kind of like I shine the light you know on the tent and I could just see like a, a bit of a shadow and I could hear the noise and I just you know and then just the sound of the foot you just know it's a bear like I've encountered bears before it was definitely a bear my daughter she had a tendency to freak out in the dark you know i'd given her her own flashlight that she could turn on whenever she felt like it and she'd fallen asleep with this little flashlight on so i woke her up and i whispered in her ear and i said sydney don't freak out it's very important that you stay quiet i think there's a, a bear outside he's not going to care about us but i just need you to be really really quiet i want you to know that this bear is out there you know and to sydney's credit because she could have just freaked out and started screaming she was like, okay, okay. And I said, Sydney, I'm gonna make some noise. And so I started, you know, when the bear would come around the tent, I started banging, you know, on whatever I had. I don't remember what I had. I, oh, I had a whistle. I had like a whistle that I blew and made a lot of noise. There is nothing freakier than like some 500 pound bear circling your tent with your six year old daughter inside. And this was the first trip that I had taken without other adults. So I was the responsible adult in this situation. There was no other adult to lean on for help or assistance. 
assistance or moral support or anything. So I wasn't alone because I had my daughter, but in a way it was, I was alone in terms of responsibility and I was scared shitless. I mean, absolutely shitless. I was like, oh my God, I brought my daughter out into the situation. Please God, let us get through this. I will never ever bring, well, I will never ever have food out in the wilderness without a bear can again. Like if it doesn't fit in the bear can, I'm not bringing it. So this went on all night long like the the scraping and the scratching and it just sounded like because that bag that was hanging had all kinds of chips and snacks and packaged items and some candy and all night long there was just scratching and scraping and it just sounded like that the it just sounded like the bear was like ripping this bag apart and spreading it all over the freaking forest i mean i was just like oh my god it's going to take us hours to clean this up but i was going to clean it up every single bit because you know, this was this was my problem, this was my mess. But more importantly, I was just like, oh my God, I hope this bear just doesn't, you know, get interested in us. And it was really weird. It would it would kind of alternate from going down the hill to bat at the bear can, sometimes come in a circle our tent, but mostly it spent time at that tree just scraping and scratching and clawing and, and ripping. We just heard the crunching of plastic all night long and oh my god, I, I just knew it was gonna be a huge, huge mess. I did not get any sleep that night. I mean I think there was at one point where it went away and maybe it came back it would sometimes I, I don't know what was going on it was just it was just insanity and I just was so afraid and I was so afraid for my daughter because you know most of the time where we live black bears don't bother people typically if they find food they just want the food they don't want to bother you but still you know what if it had cubs or friends or there was a whole bunch of them and they were hungry and what if what if they started thinking there was food inside the tent and so not that we had anything smelly because i never bring smelly things into the tent but i was just i was scared for my life i was scared for my daughter's life i was just freaking the f out <laughs> so this went on all night long and i just i prayed to god i mean i i it's it's not like i'm a big religious person i grew up with religion but then i kind of left it so honestly i'm probably more agnostic and spiritual than anything but i prayed to god finally crack of dawn you know, we had made noises, tried to scare the bear away, but when the light came out, the noises were kind of fading. And so I just decided to like get out and look and see what was going on. And so I got up and I'm like, ah, you know, making noise and banging on whatever. And, you know, I did see the shadow of at least one bear kind of going down the mountain. And what I saw shocked the crap out of me, literally shocked me like you wouldn't believe. That bag was still hanging. It was still hanging. It was not spread all over the forest. The bear had not gotten into it. It sounded like the bear got into it, but it had not gotten into it. And so I ran down the hill yelling Aah! and acting like a freak. The bear, you know, retreated and went down the hill. And that's pretty much when I got Sydney up and I got all our stuff together and I packed up as quickly as possible. And I was looking over my shoulder the entire time. Yeah, definitely. I got that bag down and I got it close to us really quickly. And I swear to God, I have never packed up so fast. And we literally ran, ran down the trail to get the hell away from that area. And oh my God, I cannot tell you. I was so grateful, so thankful. I can't even believe that bear didn't get into that bag. I mean, if this were a Yosemite bear, that bag would have been all over the forest and there would have been 10 bears on it. But I guess these dumb country Tahoe bears didn't know how to get into it. Thank God. And so, yeah, crisis averted. Um, this was many years ago and bear awareness wasn't as high then as I think it is now. That's no excuse. That was not the right thing to do. But at the time, Desolation Wilderness did not have any requirements around bear cans. They were like this optional thing. And they just said, oh, you can hang your food or bring a bear can or whatever. They weren't required. And I don't know that they're required as of this day, but they really should be because the bears are more active. There's so many more humans around Tahoe. Um, you don't want them to become habituated to our food because when they do, they get aggressive. They have to be put down and it's really tragic. I made a big mistake. I will never do it again. And I'm imploring anyone that goes hiking in Desolation Wilderness, take a bear can because uh, these animals are beautiful and generally they do not want to bother us and they serve their purpose in the forest. And yeah, we need to learn to live together with them. So yeah, that was my scariest night camping 
ever, 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 and I hope to never repeat anything like it ever again. And if you like backcountry adventures, I have a whole series documenting my 30-day hike along the Pacific Crest Trail through the Sierra Nevada during the height of summer when it's the most spectacular. So check out those videos here, or here. What's your scariest camping story?